The Mexican mural movement had a tremendous influence beyond Mexico. And all three of the big three, Rivero, Orozco, Siqueiros, worked elsewhere, certainly in the United States. I'm going to focus on Rivera. Rivera did a great deal of work in the United States, made major murals, and had a huge impact. He was quite the celebrity at the time. And he actually did a great deal of that work in the in California, especially in the San Francisco Bay Area. So this particular mural that we're looking at is one of those California San Francisco murals. So it's painted on a wall of the Pacific Stock Exchange, and it represents California, who's allegorically represented as this kind of grand goddess figure of immense proportions who embodies the land and the industry. So we have both agrarian plenty coming out of her hands that hold a cornucopia of fruits and vegetables, as well as industrial production and technology, right? There's there's digging into the mines and there's drawing out of the oil in the oil derricks. Um, it's strange from a gender point of view where she, who is a symbol, not a, re not a real person, is gendered female, and then all of the activity that's human activity is done by the men. He painted another mural titled The, paint the Making of a Fresco Showing the Building of a City. And he, he painted this at the San Francisco Art Institute. Um, it, so it is a fresco in which art is likened, the making of art is likened to the construction of, you know, could this be the Golden Gate Bridge? The construction of buildings, of structures, the engineers, there is one woman here participating in the act of constructing the world here at the drafting table. And then on the scaffolding is Rivera himself with those generous proportions that make him kind of an iconic figure and very Giotto-esque. Um, and he, what are they painting? They are painting a worker. So there's a very much of a play between different levels of reality and a sense of the real and the represented. From 1932 to 1933, he painted at the Detroit Institute of Art these extremely powerful murals that bring together the vision he had created in Mexico with the reality of labor struggles at that time in Detroit. So Rivera paints on the two main walls scenes of the assembly line in the Ford Motor Plant in Detroit, which is, you know, Motor City, the Ford capital of auto production at the time, but also the t a city that had been terribly hard hit by the depression. And literally days before Rivera starts work on this project, there had been a hunger march, thousands of unemployed workers march from downtown Detroit to the gates of the Ford Motor Company River Rouge plant. We saw the River Rouge painting by Charles Sheeler. They were demanding employment. The armed Ford security guards panicked and shot into the marchers, killed six people. So this is the context in which Rivera comes and depicts the Ford motor assembly line in an epic history. So as a history, this is a history of the machine as well as of human beings, right? And of the relationship between the human body and the machine. As a history painting, once again, we have this incredibly densely packed space full of details as if Rivera is going to give us the macroscopic view of the entire assembly line with the microscopic detail of the workers' hats and overalls the gears and the bolts on the machinery and this sense of kind of a complex industrial landscape. On the south wall, we see that sense of kinetic power, not just in the machine, but in the composition as a kind of a machine of parts assembled together and working in these complicated ins and outs influenced by cubism and yet so realistic a realism as well, a social realism is what 
Rivera wanted, so that the social reality of the workers on the production line is being shown, being made heroic. But also, there's a, there's actually an, an element of myth here, too, where the machinery that's shown here, very interestingly, Rivera has contrived to be a metal version of an Aztec deity. So he has taken this, this powerful figure of Coatlicu, the goddess who consumes human hearts, requires sacrificial offerings, and who wears a serpent skirt. So it's marvelous that look closely at all of these intricate woven snakes with their snaky reptile textured skin that makes up her snakes. And she's got these powerful fangs. She is a reference to kind of indigenous American civilization, but also a, a kind of a fearsome goddess there in the assembly line workroom. Rivera considered these murals to be among his best work. And one of the things he's able to do very successfully is to have a clear kind of structure of major epic histories in a social realist mode in the main panels, and then to use the architectural space around that to kind of deepen and extend the, the sense of significance so that he has these narrow compartments are filled with references to various mineral ores that are used in production. And then he has these allegorical figures like the one he had of California. These are ambiguously gendered. It is not clear whether they are to be understood as male or female or both. And they are, in his mind, meant to represent the idea of the four races. We know that's that those four categories are false. There are no four separate races in humankind, but that was certainly the understanding at the time. And so he's he's showing kind of the diamond as one of the products of Africa. He's showing he's showing limestone as a an earth resource that he's associated with the so-called white race. And so then in the smaller compartments ranged around the room, he has small scenes of scientific and technological investigation. But these are very ambiguous. I mean, here we have a scene of the production of poisoned gas, of, of poison chemical warfare. So think back to the Aztec goddess Coatlicue and her hunger for human hearts. There, it is so wonderfully ambiguous in this series of paintings called the Detroit Industry Murals, whether Rivera is celebrating the mechanization of the world and the enormous powers associated with that, or whether he is showing us the, their capacity to oppress because the workers seem both to be powerful figures and yet also sort of in in time to the machine as if chained to the machine it is left very ambiguous there's a very famous scene which was very controversial where Rivera is showing the power of modern medicine in terms of vaccination. And you've got an infant getting vaccinated. And this scene is directly quoting the tradition of baby Jesus, Mother Mary, and nativity scenes with the animals arrayed because, you know, animals don't hang out in scientific laboratories. They're there to give a kind of a reference to Christian sacred culture and to now kind of imply that science has taken over from that. And science is in the business of salvation. So the key to that question might be Coatlicue again, who was both a creator and a destroyer figure. And Rivera puts us right in the middle of a sense of construction and destruction happening together. So these murals were tremendously controversial at the time. Certainly the reference to baby Jesus was one of the most proximal causes of that, but the controversy went deeper than that. It had to do with the fact of laborers, with the fact of Rivera being associated with left-wing causes. And essentially when the murals were unveiled, there was a great deal of pressure on the part of the Detroit Institute to destroy them. The Catholic Church came out against them. Factory workers and college students came out for them. The, the press was writing articles about them for weeks. The museum had public 
discussions of them, and the, the, destroy, the Detroit City Council considered voting to whitewash them. So in the end, Edsel Ford of the Ford Fortune publicly accepted them for the collection and in a sense put that aside, that call to destroy them. But these were not the only murals by Rivera that were under the threat of destruction. And he will have a commission in New York for the Rockefeller Center that will actually wind up having the murals be too politically um, strong and they will be destroyed.